Are you ready? 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 Ready for what? Well, are you ready to、uh, see、uh, my brand new review marathon series on my channel? Well, I'm sure you guys are because this is going to be a special one. Yep, and guess what comes out this month? My most anticipated movie of the entire year. Well,、uh, next to Across the Spider Verse, but yeah, my most anticipated movie of fall two thousand twenty three, which、uh, which is、uh, nowadays my second most anticipated movie of all time, second only to Frozen three. And yes, I am so excited for Wish.、Uh, I cannot wait for this movie any longer. And so I think it's about time for me to、uh, prepare myself uh, to uh, see that.、Uh, Glorious movie, um, twenty one days from now, and yes, I am seeing Wish opening day, and yes, um, I am so yeah. In honor of Wish、uh, coming out, I am going to be reviewing all, or rather, most、uh, Disney revival age films leading up to, leading up to、uh, Wish. Although I will only do a select few of them. No, not select few, but select、uh, most of them. There are a few Disney revival age movies that I will not、uh, be reviewing because mainly because I already reviewed those movies and I think they're as perfect、uh, as this and and they don't need、uh, another review of it. They don't need to be replaced.、Uh, specifically, the Wreck It Ralph movies and Encanto. Yep, I、uh, reviewed、uh, those movies as well,、uh, and I I think they're as good as it is. And as 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 great as, as much as I I, I as much as I'm proud of.、Uh, My Frozen to review,、uh, especially with the fact that it's it's my, the first、uh, review I've ever done on my channel. I am going to be、uh, doing a, a redo review of Frozen too. Yep, that's the only Disney revival age movie that I will be、uh, redoing my review on.、Uh, yep,、uh, Frozen too because I think it, it deserves another review. Because why not?、Uh, why not talk about this movie, and especially using my real voice? Because you know, if you remember, my my previous Frozen two review was a, a text to speech.、Uh, Review. So why not review that movie with my real voice? But anyways, yeah, let's get on. Get on with the start of the Disney Revival Age、uh, review. So, so yeah, I am not. I am here today to do a review on the Princess and the Frog. So the Princess and the Frog came out in the year two thousand nine, and is the very first、uh, Disney Renaissance era film, and is directed by Ron Clements and John Musker, who is a、uh, probably the the fan favorite, the Disney Revival Age uh, directors, uh, and probably the the fan favorite Disney directors in general. And it stars Annika Nonni Rose, Keith David, Ofra Winfrey, Bruno Campos,、uh, Michael Leon Woodley,、uh, Jennifer Cody, Jim Cummings.、Uh, Peter Bartlett,、uh, Jennifer Lewis,、uh, Terrence Howard, John Goodman,、uh, John Goodman,、uh, Don Hall,、um, etc. And so basically, th- this movie tells the story of、uh, this.、Uh, it 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 tells、uh, the story. Well, it's based on the、uh, classic story, the the Frog Prince.、Uh, it tells the story of Tiana, a、uh, princess uh, who is a、uh, a restaurant wa- waitress uh, who. Uh, Who has a fear of frogs?、Uh, mainly because when she was a kid, which was、uh, explored in the beginning of the movie, she was afraid of frogs.、Uh, yeah, she had this、uh, fear of frogs.、Uh, mainly because of how、uh, the frog print story that her mother read to her as a kid that、uh, terrified her.、Um, especially、um, when the the, the、uh, princess kissed the frog, it, it terrified、uh, Tiana. And so、uh, when Tiana was an adult, yeah, she still.、Uh, Fierce frogs. Ah,、uh, she still fears frogs. Ah,、uh, but but she's still ah,、uh, yeah. Um, living a good life、uh, as a waitress. But one day a frog. But one day ah,、uh, Prince Naveen ah、uh, turns into a frog. Ah,、uh, thanks to ah,、uh, um, Doctor Facilier's ah、uh, evil ah、uh, spell ah,、uh, evil spell. But by turning ah、uh, Prince Naveen ah、uh, into a frog,、uh, and so yeah, he he comes to ah、uh, Tiana for help ah.、Uh, Because he thinks he says that the only way to, the only way to um, well break the spell is for uh, the frog to be kissed. But uh, but then now、uh, when Tiana turns into uh when Tiana kisses uh kisses the frog、uh, th- kisses Naveen as a frog, Tiana herself turns turns into a Naveen. No, Tiana herself turns into a frog too, 
And so, uh, Tiana and Naveen uh, must uh, go on an adventure to uh, must go on an adventure to uh, break the curse. So, uh, and along the way, they they find new friends, uh, such as you know Ray the Crocodile, uh, who is a friendly crocodile who apparently uh, likes uh, jazz uh, as much as Prince Naveen does, and Ray, who is a firefly, and Mama Od, who uh, well, I forgot what Mama Od's role was, but yeah, she's there. But so yeah, that's all for the plot. So yeah, I think um yeah everyone knows uh what uh, the uh, what on earth uh, happened uh, to the Disney uh, to the Disney uh, post Renaissance era films like the two thousands yeah the two thousands uh films were considered to be the worst era for the uh for the uh, Disney uh, for Disney animation well to me personally I I would say the wartime era would be the worst uh, Disney era period but. Uh, it would be second, yeah, but uh, the post renaissance would be second, yeah, but yeah, I mean the post renaissance would like start off so well with uh, some gems, you know, like uh, um, they don't stitch, which was which was probably the biggest hit, uh, the the biggest hit, and uh, some others, um, but uh, and just there were like some underrated gems as well, like Atlantis, the Lost Empire, uh, Treasure Planet, uh, Treasure Planet, um, you know, all that stuff, uh. And, you know like all the stuff and but there have been so many misses like half of these those movies were misses you know like a uh, dinosaur and yes I, I i know many people defend dinosaur but i'm sorry I, I i don't like dinosaur that much uh i think it's it's kind of boring and just not for me uh dinosaur um chicken little and the uh, home on the range yeah chicken little and home on the range on the range are uh my least my two least favorite Walt Disney Animation Studios movie I know you may ask me what about the wild well the wild uh, is not part of the of the Disney ca- Disney Walt Disney Animation Studios uh, canon light up I don't know how some people think it is but it was made by Disney 2 Studios like a, a, another Disney company it's not part of the canon uh, and I hope you guys uh, start to realize this yeah there's a reason why uh, they included Chicken Run and, and no, Chicken Little and Home of the Rage characters, but not uh, the Wild characters in Once Upon a Studio, cause uh, they, cause w- the Wild is is not part of canon, and thank God it isn't. By the way, um, but yeah, here's the problem. Uh, yeah, the, the post Renaissance era um uh, has uh, most of the movies in the post Renaissance era have been flops after flops after flops after flops after so many flops like. Wow, like so many unbelievable, like massive flops, and it's just sad to see uh, Disney go down this path. Yeah, it it's almost like you know Disney today when Disney would constantly um constantly um release uh flops after flops. But the only difference is that uh, Disney back then in the post Renaissance era wasn't as, as controversial as Disney as Disney now. Uh, thankfully, people weren't as toxic uh, towards the Disney where they would just want Disney to die, but. Seriously, Disney was almost killed um, by this uh, producer, um, by the CEO. I actually forgot the name, but yeah, there was just one man who tried to kill Disney. Mm-hmm. I mean, I forgot the name of, yeah, I forgot the name of that guy. I think I like there's this guy who who, who tried to kill Disney. I mean, he literally killed like killed the hand drawn animation with Home on the Range. Yeah, Home on the Range freaking sucks. It it's literally that movie was uh, the death of two D animation, and that movie is actually that piece of garbage is actually the reason as to why uh, 2d animation is dead uh, because you know people love to see 3d animations and yet um, whether 2d or 3d most of them were m- major flops i can't even think about you know some uh, disney uh post Renaissance era films that were a success maybe lilo and stitch was a box office success but that's like the only that, that that's like the only um disney um post disney Renaissance era era i can think of that was actually a box office success oh yeah also the emperor's new groove um the emperor's new groove um yeah it is another um big hit at the post Renaissance era from i mean from the post Renaissance era i actually forgot to mention that i i can't believe it and yeah that movie also flopped at the box office which it doesn't deserve it i think it's a masterpiece i don't think it's i don't think it's the it's funniest mo- disney movie like what uh everyone else says i think uh uh Aladdin would be the funniest at Disney movie to me, especially with the genie. Yeah, um, I'll review Aladdin one day, but not the, not sadly not this month in the, my Disney content month because I don't have enough time. But 
one of these days I will. Um, but anyways, back on topic. Uh, but yeah, um, I think um, well, yeah, based on what I've uh, mentioned. Um, oh yeah, also um, I should mention as well, Bolt, which was uh, probably my favorite Disney movie as a kid. The growing up, yeah, Bolt was one of my childhood movies, and and again, this is that was actually the movie that came before uh the Princess and the Frog. I'm not sure if uh, I would consider Bolt uh, personally. I would consider Ball to be a box office flop. I, I, I don't know about it, yeah. But yeah, it kind of got um, div- pretty uh, divisive uh, critical reception wh- when, where uh, some would either uh, call it um, a big hit, uh, some would like it and some would dislike it. I personally like Ball. Uh, yeah, I have nostalgia for that film. But yeah, but yeah, um, but you know, the uh, savior of Disney, uh, the true savior of Disney uh, has to be this film right here, The Princess and the Frog, a film that uh, kind of uh, underperformed the box office, though um, it did win over fans. Not everyone appreciated it. Uh, yeah, um, It wasn't appreciated by everyone. There are some people who um, consider this to be one of the, to, to be a bottom tier uh, in the Disney Renaissance, no, Disney Revival era, but yeah. But yeah, this is the movie that uh, made the Disney Revival era um, born. And yeah, thanks to uh, John Clements and Ron Musker for uh, saving Disney. Yeah, they were, those uh, directors were the ones who saved Disney with this film. They brought back uh, the traditional 2D animation, like what it was in, in the Renaissance era and, you know, all that stuff. And they um, brought back the, the traditional um, Disney princess um the thingy that, that we've seen in back in the Renaissance era and, and, and just like the Renaissance era they also introduced a new culture uh, to with you know very similar to Mulan um, you know you know how Mulan uh, Mulan uh, had the Chinese culture and had the Chinese uh, you know Disney uh, prince as well and this one uh, um, we, we got a black uh, an African American Disney princess yeah but to keep the diversity alive I bet if this movie came out today, people would have uh, hated this movie and, and be like, Oh, it's woke, woke, woke. It's so diverse. Why is there black leads and, 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 and the white people were treated like garbage? Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, I hope that they don't do that to Wish. Uh, I mean, because Wish star- stars another black princess, just like uh, Princess Diana. But yeah. Um, now, even though not everyone uh, appreciated the, um, the princess in the frog back then, uh, at least you should acknowledge this movie for uh, starting a brand new era of uh, of uh, Disney um, princesses, like a brand new era. Like like this movie was like a, a game changer. Even though it didn't do well, it uh, started a brand new era. And not only did it start a brand new era, but it started my favorite Disney era period. Yep, the goated the uh, Pika Renaissance era. Yep, uh, love the Renaissance era. No, no, I'm not, no, but my bad. The revival era. Yeah. The, yeah, the, the Revival era is my favorite Disney era. Well, technically, it's tied with uh, the Renaissance era, but I, I think uh, um, the Revival era is closer to my heart than the Renaissance era. But yeah, um, now, when it comes to my thoughts on the film back then, I honestly um, thought, I called this movie mid and okay-ish. I was like, eh, I was not. Like, this movie didn't really win me over, especially with with the, the attempt of uh, bringing back to the, the traditional 2D animation. It didn't really win me over. Uh, yeah, the, I was like, it was kind of like okay, like the, the st- like I didn't like the directing that much, uh, especially with all the side stuff. Uh, but I, I eventually gave this a chance. I was like, hoping I would like this movie even more on rewatch. I was like, okay, la, let's uh, just uh, keep, let's I'm gonna keep this watch this one with an open mind, hoping that this would uh, be better this time. And uh, I gotta say. This movie is amazing. Yep, I love this movie now. This is a such a game changer to Disney, and I, 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 I can see now why uh, why it is because this movie, yeah, this movie is just really good. And yeah, now it's not one of the best Disney revival age movies, and it's not and it's not a perfect movie. I will get to, you know, some of my criticisms later on. But right now, I just want to give. Uh, all, all the praise I can give this film. Give, uh, you know, all the, the good things that I can say about this film. So, yeah. Let's get it on. So, yeah. Um, the, I think the biggest compliment that I, I want to give this film is, is the fact that it felt like uh, a return to form for uh, 
the Disney for, for Disney went like how they were back in, in the Renaissance era. Also, while I, I am more of a fan of, of 3D animation from Disney than 2D animation, um, I definitely uh, acknowledge this movie for uh, for uh, trying to do uh, revive uh, the 2D animation style because uh, yeah, people just thought they want uh, the, the Disney um uh, the, the people thought that the hand drawn animation was dead already um thanks to Home and the Ridge, but yeah, this movie uh definitely saved it well not really since it didn't have the best performance at the box office sadly but i wish this movie did better uh because my god the hand drawn animation in this movie is uh it's just so freaking good yeah they disney really um uh, put so much effort into making uh into animating this movie and uh, it really does uh feel like uh, it really does feel like uh, one of the uh, I mean, it really does feel like a classic, and I gotta say, um, that I mean, this is some um, probably the best two D animation in a Disney movie since uh, The Lion King. Uh, considering it's a movie in the twenty first century, I mean, you can clearly tell, you can clearly see the advanced technology that this movie had. Yeah, this movie was so advanced, and like, you, you get spots of computer and computer you know, generated scenes, but that that makes it uh, look a lot more gorgeous, but. But you know, um, at its core, it's a dis. It is um, still a two, two D hand drawn animation. Like, it it, it has so much uh, color, so so much uh, vibrance, so much uh, you know energy. Like, yes, there are times when when you know um the animation can get a little too um over the top and too cartoony. But that's fine. Um, it's it, it's a two D animation. Like, it it has the hand drawn animation. So of course you would. Uh, Expect that, and man, there are so many creative things in this movie. It's very colorful. It's very vibrant. It it's just uh so creative uh with its use of colors. It with with its use of background animation. Yeah, certainly uh the the Disney um re- a Disney live action remake of this uh cannot uh, uh, w- may not be able to uh recapture that. Also, personally, I I don't mind the. Uh, I don't mind this movie uh, getting a uh, live action remake. I actually wouldn't mind it uh, because I actually would, wouldn't mind a a live action remake as long as they they get the casting right. I mean, like you know, it, it's not winning me over so far with the rumor that uh, Lupita Nyong oh is, is going to uh, is rumored to play uh, Tiana the leading role Tiana. I mean, that is uh, such a poor casting choice because I mean Disney just has this mindset oh oh she's black so she's automatically playing. Uh, playing the role but here's the thing Lupita Nyong'o is in her 30s uh, and Tiana is like um, in her like early 20s like her teenage years so uh, obviously Lupita Nyong'o um, Lupita Nyong'o is uh, way too old uh, to uh, way 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 too old to play Tiana in fact she is the age of um, her mother uh, what is her name again Goldie I think um, Yeah. In, in fact oh yeah Eudoria in fact yeah she um has the uh yeah, but she has no way to. I mean, Lupita Young oh, it's literally about the age of uh, Tiana's mother, Eudoria. Um, so yeah, that that won't work for me. Yeah, so yeah, I, I think um they should get uh, Zendaya to 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 play uh, Tiana. I think that would work, or maybe Kiki Palmer. Uh, and maybe even Holly Bailey. Yeah, I think Holly Bailey uh, should have uh, went for Tiana instead of uh, Ariel. Um, but yeah, um. But yeah, anyways, uh, back to the, the actual Princess and the Frog movie. Yep, um, a lot of the 2D animation, the creativity, especially in the musical numbers. I'll get to the musical numbers in a bit. And yes, so, uh, and once again, this movie um has a traditional Disney princess, just like uh, the uh, Disney revival, no, Disney Renaissance era. Why do I keep co- confusing their Renaissance and their revival? But yeah, this is the, the revival. But yeah, uh, but yeah, I love uh, Princess Tiana. She feels like a a princess from the Disney Renaissance era, and the uh, all of her character arc, um, you know, of you know, just uh, trying to face her fears, uh, even though yeah, the movie never uh, mentions about you know Tiana having to face her fears, but you can clearly see that Tiana is actually afraid of frogs, and and she turns into uh, one of her fears. Uh, she turns into one of her fears, which is a frog, and, and she must learn to live with, with it, and now live with it, and now at the end, she isn't afraid of frogs anymore. She's in the fear of frogs, and that is a character development right there. And I mean character development in a way that doesn't feel uh, exposition heavy at all. It, it there's, there was no exposition thrown into it. Uh, it was just um, 
well, you, you can clearly figure that out. Like, like that's what I love about Disney. They're able to treat their audience with respect without you know, having to tell them what's going on in the story. And Princess and the Frog is certainly a uh, a a good example of that. Like such a good example. Uh, Tiana just still works so well. I mean, don't. Now I will say though, she's not one of the one of my favorite that Disney uh rents revival era princess. Yeah, she's no Rapunzel. She's no uh Moana. She's no Mirabelle. Um, I already prefer Asha over Tiana, and she's one million percent certainly is no uh. Anna and Elsa, but yeah, I mean, for a uh, hand drawn Disney princess, like a, a traditional Disney princess, I mean, Tiana just works so well. Although, I I know um people uh criticize this movie for criticize this movie for um for um not having enough uh, human Tiana, but am I the only one who prefers f- from Tiana over uh human Tiana? Yep, from Tiana would be my favorite character in the film. I mean. With um, uh, Tiana being a frog, she just brings a lot more charm to it. Uh, yeah, she's just um, a lot more charming, in, in my opinion. Uh, in my opinion, yeah. And also, Prince Naveen, yes, he's way more of a frog than a human. But, I, but at the same time, like just like Tiana, I think he's a better frog than human. Like, like you know, like both Naveen and, and Tiana uh, work together. Um, and also, and throughout the movie, you, you know that, that they work best as a, as a couple. And that's actually one thing I can compliment about this movie. Uh, you really feel their chemistry. I mean, they don't instantly fall in love uh, when they meet. Uh, like, Naveen just wanted Tiana's help and Tiana just turns into uh, what Naveen turned into up front. But, and they just, they're just working together. And Prince Naveen uh, already is about to marry Charlotte. Which I'll, I'll get to Charlotte in, in a second. But Prince Naveen... Uh, but Prince Naveen and Tiana really do learn to work together. Um, and uh, as an end result, uh, the more like they, they work together, the more they start to have feelings for each other. And uh, and the audience started to realize that they're actually perfect for each other. And uh, and that um, Prince Naveen and Charlotte uh, don't fit as, as a couple as much as uh, the movie thinks. Uh, as much as Prince Naveen and Charlotte thought. And yeah, Charlotte is... Uh, Probably the most underrated character um, of the film. I, in my letterbox, I, I slammed the Charlotte uh, so hard. Yeah, I, I call Charlotte a joke. Charlotte, um, a, a jerk, an asshole, you know, all, all that stuff. But I was wrong about her. I think she, she's such a great character. Yeah, first of all, uh, she is adorable. I mean, how can you not think she's cute? And I love her energy. And she's not mean at all. Uh, she's, uh, she's not mean, uh, yeah. I think Charlotte is just such a sweet princess who just kind of has anger issues. So, but I, I just love her energy. Yeah, she's probably the most cartoony character uh, in the film. And um and uh, um, Big Daddy, also one of the weaker characters of the film, uh, still great, especially with the Solia uh, voicing him. Yep, uh, John Goodman now has uh, two uh, Disney animated uh, roles. Uh, first of um, Solly from uh, Monsters Inc. Uh, and now a uh, big uh, daddy from uh, this movie. Are there any other Disney uh, and Disney uh, Pixar movie? Uh, are there any other actors who started both a Disney anime movie and a Pixar movie besides John Goodman? Well, if you know one, let me know down below in the comments because to me personally, I can't really uh, think of one. Uh, I can't really think of one. And I mean, the side characters are great too. Uh, Louis, Louis uh, the uh, crocodile. I called him Louis earlier, but he's actually uh, he's actually his name is actually Louis. Like, name is Louis uh, the crocodile. I mean, such a great psychic, and I I love uh, his talent. Uh, and then you got uh, Ray Ray the fly, Ray Ray the fly. Uh, the, the um firefly who ap- who apparently gets killed off at the end. Yeah. He apparently gets killed off at the end. Yeah, he dies. Yeah, wow. I, w- I was like shocked. I actually um forgot that, that that he got killed off in a movie. Last time I rewatched it. Yep, he yep um Ray dies at the end, and I was I was really surprised. Honestly, I was like not expecting that. Like I can't believe that Disney has has the balls uh, to kill off characters. I mean, and and that's what I love about Disney. They take risks. I mean they. They have so much uh, risk, you know. Uh, they they kill off characters, uh, because they know that that you know um death is a part of life, and uh, this is and there are some animated movies that that are truly afraid to kill their characters, cause you know they'll be like, oh, it's a it's, it's a kids movie. We can't see 
good characters die, only villains. Uh, like, we don't want to make them sad, but this is like, ah, uh, who, who cares? We'll kill off characters. I mean, well, they, ki- they killed the Mufasa and the Lion King. Uh, they killed the Tadashi and Big Hero 6. Although some people make, make rumors that, that Tadashi is not really dead. Uh, and he'll uh, reveal to be alive in a sequel. We'll see about that. I mean, we'll see about that. I'll talk more about that in my Big Hero 6 review, by the way. Um, I think someone died in Zootopia. I'm not sure, but I, I can't even remember. But I- I'll see when I rewatch Zootopia. Uh, um, and... Okay, well, I'm not sure, but, but I, I think there's another Disney movie where someone, where a major character dies. I'm not sure where it is, but yeah. And I, I, I can see Frozen 3 potentially killing off, uh, killing off a character, killing off a character, probably Matthias, probably Matthias. Yeah, I can, I can see that happening. Uh, I, I can see that, see, see that uh, happening, but yeah, um... But yeah, Ray dying, I, I, I did not expect a movie to, to pull it off, and, and that's why I love Disney, and, and... and and also Ray's funeral uh, g- gave me vibes of uh, Nadeem's uh, funeral in in Avatar: The Way of Water, and also uh, Grace's uh, funeral in uh, well, not really a funeral, but you know what I mean. But I mean, it gave me vibes of, of both uh, you know um, Nadeem's uh, death in funeral in Avatar: The Way of Water, and also Stork's uh, funeral in How to Train Dragon too. Yeah, it 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 gave me those vibes and. Yeah, it gave me uh, those uh, vibes. Uh, it gave me those vibes, and yeah. Uh, what else is there to say? Oh yeah, and also Mama Odie. Uh, such a great character. I mean, I love Mama Odie. Uh, she's just a lot of fun. Uh, and well, that's pretty much it. Uh, and also Doctor Facilier, such a golden villain. Uh, now yeah, pro- honestly, Doctor Facilier might be one of my favorite uh, Disney uh revival age villains. I mean, he's just so full of energy and and just uh so like i, I just love his uh energy over the top he's so over the top uh and yeah um he's just he's just a fun character and, and, a, and a terrifying villain and also the the, the the scene when um the scene when dr facilio get, gets defeated in the climax and, and then you got you know all those you know things you know remember from you know um friends of the other side song you know um and then you hear that are you ready are you ready and then all these things are coming like co- go after dr facilia and then he's uh and then they are like saying are you ready to him and, and then they suddenly defeat him yeah that is my favorite scene in the film it's uh, creative and it's dark and i love that and that's why this movie isn't one of much one of disney's more mature movies it certainly does have its mature moments as well well and not to satisfy me and and let's talk about the songs and the the song song yeah 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 the songs um now i i mean throughout the review i actually sound like i was praising this movie like like i i like i was praising this movie like as if i was not gonna give a flaw like i was not gonna criticize criticize this movie for something and i would uh call it a flawless masterpiece well it's not a perfect movie because i will admit that the songs are a weak link in the film now there are some banger songs there are some great songs you know like almost there uh which is hands down the best song in the movie and my favorite song of 2009. Yeah, the best song of 2009. Yep. Yep. Even better than, than the overrated ICO. Yep. Uh, sorry, but I, I don't like I, I don't like ICO that much. I think that song is extremely forgettable. And probably my only negative with the first Avatar movie. Uh, but I think um um I think that you know um okay. Almost I think that almost there should have won uh best original song at the Oscars than then uh, I see you in my personal opinion because that song is a, is a banger it's such a classic you know yeah I remember um almost there way more than I see you and also friends on the other side the uh, friends on the other side is great um yeah fr- friends on the other side I mean the, the villain song yeah it's in my top five favorite villain songs of all time and yeah, it's probably my my fourth uh, favorite villain song behind like fourth only behind the uh, only behind um um be prepared hellfire and uh, this is the things I get from the upcoming wish yeah and yes I think it, it it's a better villain song than Martin knows best from uh, Tangled uh, from Tangled and also Mama Oli song is great as well uh very catchy and I swear um I've heard that song before you know with the uh I forgot the, the, the song lyrics but I swear I've heard that song before like in something in another piece of media outside of uh 
Princess and the Frog, but I can't really seem to pinpoint it. The opening song is solid as well, but there are some songs that are really forgettable. Like I was like, like they were like big misses, and, and they definitely serve as a flaw here because you know the soundtrack doesn't feel uh, like like it's as good as it should be, especially with Disney because not all the songs are, are particularly memorable. Um, I didn't like Louis' song that much. I was just eh. I didn't like Ray's song. Like it was like eh. It was forgettable. Uh. I think there was there were a few more other songs that, that I, I completely forgot about up to the point up to the point where I don't even remember uh, who sang uh, who uh, sang uh, those songs so yeah um it's just yeah the soundtrack there were like only three um good songs truly good songs and one song that I think is fine I guess it's all right but this but you know um mo mo usually Disney musicals a perfect Disney musical uh, would have all the songs be bangers so Princess and Frog does not have a complete list of all banger songs and would have some you know forgettable songs is definitely a flaw also I I didn't really like how there like some there was there were a bit of twerking here especially with Ray's character and yeah I didn't like some scenes some turkey scenes although the the, fl the flamingo twerking scenes in Mama Oli song I, I can I can deal with that but yeah like Ray's twerking but shaking a little too far so yeah, um, oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention before I wrapped up this review, uh, I also love the scene when, um, when, uh, when uh, Asha, oh wait, I mean Kiana, uh, wishes upon a star, like she uh, makes the, she looks up at the star and, and makes a wish, yeah, perf, yeah, I, I love it when Disney movies do that, especially when the uh, wish is literally gonna be about the, the wishing star, about the origins of the wishing star about the wishing star which is just uh, a, a perfect concept uh, and yeah so yeah every time i i see a disney movie do that it, it'll automatically get get credit for that and uh it, it really does like give me wish vibes when you see the character looking up at the stars and just making a wish just like what tiana did in this movie so overall while it isn't a perfect movie the princess the princess and the frog uh, is a movie that i definitely uh find much more appreciation on rewatch uh, due to how it brings back uh, to the animation in uh, a way that feels like a Disney uh, Renaissance era film. Uh, it has a great uh, Disney princess, a perfect uh, culture of New Orleans that, that makes you want to visit there one day. Like, I, I absolutely love, uh, you know, the, the, the representation of uh, black culture uh, without any controversy. I thank God for that because I'm sure y'all know how... Uh, diverse movies uh are, are have controversy nowadays great songs although some of the songs are uh the weak link of the film a great characters great villain a, a really great story that has uh hidden messages that, that no one really uh, not a lot of people really see in it um like like um tiana facing your fears and yeah it's just very entertaining it's not one of my favorite disney um revival age films uh but it is a uh, welcome one, and and I'm glad it's getting the appreciation it deserves. And nowadays, yeah, people are starting to love this film again. So with that said, I'm gonna give the Princess and the Frog a four and a half stars out of five. Near perfect film. So yeah, that's uh, that's all. For, so yeah, that's all for my um my review of uh, the first of the start of the Disney uh. Re revival age films and it is a perfect start indeed yeah i will say that it is perfect uh, as the start uh, of my favorite disney era wait did i say rances again um it's revival yeah um if i am mistaken that again so yeah that's all um what are your thoughts on uh, the prince and the princess and the frog uh, do you agree with me that this is such a great uh start uh, to the uh disney uh revival age films uh do you love this movie even more than i did and have no problem with it or are you in the side of those people who uh, doesn't really care about this movie and consider considers it as one of the weaker films in the Disney Revival Age films? So yeah, comment down below, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and stay tuned for my uh, review on uh, Tangle, the, the next uh, Disney uh, Revival, Revival Age films. Oh, and also my uh, trailer reaction for uh, King of the Planet of the Apes. Uh, if you don't know, um, they announced that a new chair was going to come out uh, later, technically later, like today, today based for a uh, US based the time. Yeah, it comes out later today and I will most certainly do a chair reaction to uh, that film. So yeah, anyways, uh, bye guys.